Let's go over here! You remember this room, Mammy? Cold, it is my hands are quite frozen. Your rooms are just as they were, Mamushka, the white one and the mauve one. My dear, beautiful room. I used to sleep here when I was little. I'm behaving like a little girl still. Well, you must be so cold. And Varia still looks like a nun. Just the same. Yes, she always did. And I recognized Dunyasha at once. Their train was two hours late. What do you think of that? Terrible state of affairs. Oh, my right dog even eats nuts. Goodness gracious, think of that. Oh, well, I never come this way. What happened here? I don't know. We were waiting. We've been waiting and waiting for you. I haven't slept for four nights on the journey. I'm frozen. Well, it was Easter when you went away. Now, there was snow then and frost. But now... <laughs> oh, my precious. How oh, I've missed you and waited for you, dearest. <laughs> my pretty one. <laughs> oh, I must tell you something at once. Oh, I can't keep it to myself a moment longer. What is it now? But just after Easter, Effie hold off the clerk made me a proposal. Oh, it's always the same with you. <laughs> All my hairpins have fallen out. I really don't know what to do about it. He loves me. He loves me so much. <laughs> my own room. My window. Just as if I'd never been away. I'm home. Tomorrow morning I shall wake up and run into the garden. Oh, if only I could get to sleep. I never slept all through the journey. I was so anxious. Piotr Segerich arrived the day before yesterday. Petya? Yes. He's sleeping out in the bathhouse. Lives there, too. <laughs> I'm afraid of being in the way, he said. <laughs> oh, I ought to go and wake him up. But Barbara Mikhailovna told me not to. Don't you wake him up, she told me. <laughs> well, thank God you've arrived. You're home again. You're really here, my darling. You come back to me, my precious. Oh, you've no idea what I've been through. I can just imagine. I left here in Holy Week. It was gold then. And Charlotta would keep chattering all the time and showing off her conjuring tricks. <laughs> Why on earth did you want to go and tie Charlotta around my neck? But you could travel <laughs> alone in Michigan, not at 17. Well, we arrived in Paris. It was so cold and there was snow on the ground. <laughs> I can't speak a word of French. <laughs> Mama was living on the fifth floor of a big house. I went upstairs and there were a lot of French people with her. Ladies. And an old Catholic priest with a book. The room was full of tobacco smoke and very uncomfortable. I suddenly felt sorry for Mama. Oh, so sorry. I took her face in my hands and couldn't bear to let her go. Mama kept on kissing me and crying. Don't, don't. You know she had to sell her villa at Mentoni. Mm. She has nothing left. Nothing. And of course, I hadn't a copic either. We could hardly manage to get home. <laughs> and Mama won't understand. Whenever we got out to have dinner at a station, she would order the most expensive things. And tip the waiter a whole rouble. And she'll order us just the same. And Yasha expects an expensive dinner too. Oh, it's simply awful. You remember Yasha, the boy Mama took with her for a manservant. She's brought him back with her. I've seen the young rascal. Well, how is everything here? Has the interest on the mortgage been paid off? There's no money to pay it with. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The estate is to be sold in August. Oh, 
Oh, heavens. <laughs> I'd like to... Father, has he proposed to you yet? Why? But I'm sure he loves you. Why don't you come to an understanding? What are you waiting for? I don't think it will ever come to anything. He has a lot to do. He has no time for me. He doesn't even look at me. May God bless him. But I'd rather not see him. It makes me miserable. Everyone keeps talking about our wedding. Everyone keeps congratulating me. And really, there's nothing to it. It's just a dream. You've got a new brooch like a bee. Yes. <laughs> Mama bought it for me. <laughs> oh, when I was in Paris, I went up in a balloon. <laughs> My darling is home again. You know, all day long as I'm going about my housework, I dream and dream. I think, if only we could marry you to some rich man, then my mind would be at rest. I'd go away somewhere, to a holy place, to Kiev, to Moscow. I'd go on and on from one holy place to another. What a wonderful life. It must be after four. Time you were asleep. It's true. Mama hasn't changed at all. She was allowed to do as she liked. She just gave everything away. Mm. You know, when doctors prescribe too many remedies for an illness, it probably means that the illness can't be cured at all. <laughs> I think I racked my brain as I find all sorts of solutions to our problems. So many, in fact, that it means in reality that there are none. <laughs> it would be nice to inherit a legacy from someone. Or to marry our Anya to a very rich man. Or to go to Yaroslav and try my luck with the Countess, my aunt. She's very, very rich, you know, my aunt. If only God would help us. Now, don't start snivelling, Varya. My aunt is very rich, but she doesn't like us for several reasons. First of all, my sister married a solicitor instead of a nobleman. <laughs> and then, in addition to marrying beneath her, her behaviour since then has not been exactly comme il faut. Oh, of course, she's a dear, kind, charming creature, and I'm devoted to her. But whatever you may say in her defense, you can't deny that she's a bit immoral. You can see it in her slightest movement. I'm just standing she... in the doorway. What's that? Who? Oh, uh, funny, I've got something in my right eye. I can't see properly. Uh, and last Thursday... When I was down at the district Anya, court... why aren't you asleep? I can't sleep. I just can't. Oh, my little girl, my darling. Oh. You're not my niece. You're my guardian angel. Oh. You're everything to me. Believe in me. Trust me. I do believe you, Uncle. Everybody <laughs> loves you and respects you. My dear Uncle, you ought to be silent. You ought to hold your tongue. What were you saying just now about my mother? About your own sister? Why did you say that? Yes, yes, I know. It was awful of me. Oh, God forgive me. And a little while ago, I began making that ridiculous speech about the bookcase. So stupid of me. And it wasn't until I'd finished speaking that I realized how stupid it was. It's true, Uncle. You oughtn't to speak so much. Just don't talk, that's all. If only you didn't talk, you'd be so much happier. <laughs> I won't talk anymore. I won't. <laughs> Only I must just say this, oh. it's business. 
Last Thursday, I was down at the district court, and a lot of people came up and began to talk to me about this and that and the other. And it seems that we might be able to arrange a loan without security that would enable us to begin to pay off the arrears of the mortgage. If only uh, God would help now us. Now, Tuesday, I shall go and talk about it again. Varia, you must stop caterwauling. Your mother will speak to the Pachin. Of course, he won't refuse her. And then when you're arrested, you shall go to Yaroslav. To the Countess, your great aunt. We'll operate from three points at once. Et voila! We'll pay the interest, I'm convinced. I swear by anything you like, the estate shall not be sold. I swear by my happiness. Here's my hand on it. Call me a dishonest, useless person if I allow it to go to auction. I swear it shan't be sold, it shan't. Oh, Uncle, <laughs> you are so good and clever. Uh -huh. I feel so much better now, mm. calmer and happier. Leonid Andreevich, have you no fear of God? Huh? When are you going to bed? At once, at once. On. Go along, Fierce, I'll get myself undressed. <laughs> well, children. <laughs> Details tomorrow. But now we'll go to bed. Mm. You know, I'm a man of the 80s. Oh. People criticize those old days, but believe me, I've had to suffer a great deal for my convictions in my time. And that's the reason the peasants love me. One must know the peasants. One must know... Now, Uncle, to... what do you promise? There you go again. Remember, Uncle, you promised. Here, yeah, and there, Rich. Come in, come in. <laughs> Double into the center. A good break. <laughs> oh, be quiet. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, we're talking about getting back in the morning. Yes, sir. And you come to Oh. Oh. I feel happier. I don't want to go to Yaroslav. I don't like my great aunt, but all the same, I feel happier thanks to Uncle Lenny. <laughs> I'll go. Oh. Um, while you were away, there was some trouble in the servants' quarters. As you know, only the old servants sleep there now. Epimushka, Polya, the Estigmin. Old carp, too. Well, they began to allow trams and disreputable people in for the night, if you please. I said nothing. Then I heard that a rumour was going round that I'd ordered them to be fed on nothing but peas. Out of meanness, you understand? Well, of course, it was all your stigmas doing. All right, I said to myself. All right. Just you wait. At last, I said, boy, here he comes. Now then, you stick me, I said. You old wretch. What do you mean by saying such things about me? Anichka. She's asleep. Well, let's go to bed. Come along. My darling is asleep. Come along. She's asleep. Sleep. I'm so tired. Oh, listen to the bell. Mama, kind Mama, and Uncle, come along, my darling, come. Mama.
my sunshine, my spring. 